Hey, hey folks, welcome back. So I don't know if I told you, but I studied economics back in the day. And of course, a lot of the beginning of that education was typical stuff like supply and demand. But towards the end of my education, I got to study much more interesting things like auction design and also market design. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today in one of the most interesting applications of a market design algorithm that I've ever seen, which is what's actually used to match medical students to residency programs in the United States called, more commonly, the medical match. Now, typically, when you think about markets, you think about some kind of goods that are being sold or bought. But markets are just anything that match one side of the marketplace to a different side of the marketplace. And in that case, that's students who want to be in residency programs to residency programs who want to accept students. And this is the basic steps of how it works. And the final step we'll see is actually running this medical matching algorithm, which we're going to do in real time using this data we have here. So the first step is that candidates apply to programs. So they say, hey, I might want to go here or here, so I'm going to apply to a couple of different programs. Then programs will invite those candidates to interview there. Then once all that interview process is done, we're going to have candidates and also programs are going to create ranked lists of each other. So each candidate is going to create a ranked list of the programs they would be happy going to, the most preferred one on top and the least preferred one on the bottom. They can also choose to just leave programs off, but we'll see what the consequences of that are. And also each program is also going to correspondingly create a ranked list of which candidates it would most want. Then once we have those ranked lists, we're going to run what's called the medical matching algorithm, which is the magic that actually figures out, based on these ranked lists from either side, which student should go to which residency program and which residency program would be best served by accepting which student. So let's go ahead and see how that works and then see why that has favorable properties. So we're going to start with the candidate side. So we're going to start with Andy. Andy says, my first choice is Dose Clinic. It's his only choice, and we'll see if that there's consequences of that sometimes. But Andy says, I would like to go to Dose Clinic. First, we have to check if Dose Clinic actually wants Andy at all, if he's in the list at all. Because if he's not in the list of Dose Clinic, he cannot go there. That's one of the conditions of this algorithm, is that candidates cannot go to programs that don't list them, and also programs can't accept candidates who don't list them. So in this case, we do see that Andy is on the list for Dose Clinic. And so what we do right now is create what's called a temporary match. We're saying, you know what, I need to look at the rest of the rankings, but right now I'm going to say, Andy, you have a spot at Dose Clinic. So the algorithm says, Andy is gonna have a spot at Dose Clinic. Now we go on to Bob. Bob says, I also wanna to go to Dose Clinic. That's my number one choice. So let's go to that number one choice and see if that has ranked Bob. We see Bob is ranked there. And one thing I forgot to mention is that each of these clinics or programs is going to have two spots. So two spots for Uno Health, two spots for Dose Clinic, two spots for Trace Medical. And so we see there's another spot open here because only Andy is temporarily matched. So Bob is also on the list. We say, you know what, Bob, you get a temporary match here as well. Now things start getting a little interesting. Carly says, hey, I also have my first choice as Dose Medical. Let's go to Dose Medical. Carly is in fact ranked, but, but Carly is ranked below two candidates who are preferred by Dose Clinic. Because of that reason, because it would be inefficient to add Carly and remove either Andy or Bob, because that would just leave Dose Clinic in a worse position, Carly cannot go to Dose Clinic. Carly is not going to Dose Clinic, so we cross that off from the preference here, and we cross that off from the preference here. But let's see if we can match Carly somewhere else. So we go to Carly's next preference, Tress Medical. Is Carly listed here? Yes, Carly is right there, and they have two spots, and no one's temporarily listed, so we go ahead and match Carly right there for right now. Now we go to Dan. Dan says, I want to go to Uno Health. Well, Dan's not listed at Uno Health, therefore Dan cannot go to Uno Health by the previous rules that we laid out. We go to Dan's next preference. Dan says, I would like to go to Dose Clinic. Well, same kind of logic as Carly. There's two preferred candidates, and so Dan will not go to Dose Clinic. So we cross that off from both sides here. Dan only has one more choice. It's getting kind of slim pickings here. So Dan says, I would like to go to Trace Medical. We see that Dan is listed here. We see there's two spots, only one is taken up. And so we see Dan is temporarily listed at Trace Medical. And now finally we deal with Ellie. So Ellie says, I would like to go to Dose Clinic. Well, as it turns out, Ellie is actually the top choice for Dose Clinic. And so we are going to secure her a spot at Dose Clinic. We're gonna say you are going to be given a spot here. But because there's only two spots, somebody needs to get kicked out. And naturally, from a market efficiency standpoint, that's going to be the person who is least preferred by Dose Clinic. So Bob, who was given that temporary match, is now no longer given that match. So Bob is not going to go to Dose Clinic. We go to Bob's next choice. Bob, do you want to go to Uno Health? 
We go to Uno Health. Bob is not listed there at all, and so Bob will not go to Uno Health. In fact, Bob will go nowhere. And now the match is complete. Before we start talking about could we have a better match, what are the properties of this match, let's just review what the outcome of this match is. So we see that in Trace Medical, Carly and Dan will be going there. For Dose Clinic, Ellie and Andy will be going there. Uno Health will not get anyone. They did not secure any candidates during this process. And we see that Bob also did not secure going to any program in this process. So you might think this is kind of inefficient. We did get four out of our five candidates matched and we got two out of our three programs filled up, but shouldn't there be some different allocation we could have done so that Bob got to go somewhere or Uno Health got to recruit somebody? Well, we can start getting at the answer by just asking a couple hypotheticals and see that things don't really work out when we try to change things from where they're at right now. We look at Dose Clinic, well, it's kind of in the best case scenario, so we don't want to change anything for Dose Clinic. For Trace Medical, the better outcome would be if they got Ellie or Andy, but if they got Ellie or Andy, that would be taking it away from Dose Clinic, and so that wouldn't be a win-win for everybody. Let's look at Uno Health, they didn't get anyone. Well, what if we gave them Ellie? For the same reason, if we gave them Ellie, we'd be making things worse off for Dose Clinic. What if we gave them Carly? Well, if we gave them Carly, then that would be making things off for Trace Medical because we know that they can't replace Carly with Ellie or Andy here because of what we said before. So we get into this kind of logic where no matter what move we try to make, no matter what kind of deviation we try to make from this stable arrangement, there's not a win-win. There's always a loser in that trade. There's not some kind of mutually agreeable trade that we can make here. Even from the candidate side. So let's go ahead and uh, mark where everyone's going. So Ellie and Andy are going to Dose Clinic. So this is where they're going. We see that uh, Carly and Dan are going to Trace Medical. Okay, we mark that. We saw Bob is not going anywhere. So is there anything we can do better? Well, Ellie and Dose both got their top choice. Not much we can do better for them there. Carly, for example, did not get her top choice, but if we were to send Carly to Dose Clinic, that would be making things worse off for Dose Clinic. So that's not a mutually agreeable trade. Similar story for Dan. Dan barely got a match, got his third choice, but he could never have matched at Uno because they didn't even list him, and he can't match at Dose either because that would be making things off for Dose Medical. Trace is where he needs to go for this all to be stable. So we see that there's nothing we can do. There's no swap we can make here that's going to be mutually agreeable for both sides of that swap. And that is one of the really cool properties, and we, we're not going to prove that mathematically in this short video here, but that's one of the properties of this method, this medical match method. It is stable. Stable meaning that once we go through the process and we make all the matches, there is never going to be a case where there's going to be a mutually agreeable match we can make that's going to be better for both sides. It's stable in that sense. So one really nice property is that it's stable. And another really nice property, which we also won't fully prove out, is that there is no incentive to lying about your preferences. So there's some markets out there based on the rules of that market where you can actually benefit from lying about your preferences or leaving some of your lower ranked preferences off. That is not the case for this market here. It is always, always better. It's a property of this method that it's best to list all of the preferences that you have even if they are at the end of your preference list, as long as they are preferable to not having that at all. For example, we see that some folks, both people and programs, provided kind of short lists. And if those short lists were their attempt at gaming the system, well, it kind of backfired. For example, suppose that Uno Health listed Ellie and Carly, but secretly, secretly, they also would have had Bob at the end, but they got in a boardroom or something and they decided that, you know what, maybe we leave Bob off, so it kind of seems like we're super selective. But that kind of shot themselves in the foot because when we got back to Bob during the match, we saw that Bob can't go to Dose. That's still going to be true. But Bob would have liked to go to Uno. And if Uno had Bob on their list, then we easily could have gotten to a case where Bob got matched to Uno. So at least they could have got one candidate and Bob could have gone somewhere. So that would have just been better for everybody. But instead, by lying about their preference and leaving it off, we got the situation where Bob didn't get to go anywhere and they didn't get to recruit any candidates at all. So we see that the two good properties of this method are that it's stable and that also there is no incentive to lying about your preferences on either side of the marketplace. So I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, just the fact that we have this market, there's not money involved at all. It's not a money market. It's a market for matching based on where people most want to go and the value that those places place on those people. We can actually use those preferences and a pretty simple method to figure out the ideal stable allocation of those people to those places and those places to those people. So hopefully you thought this was interesting as well. Please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Please comment below if you have any thoughts on this or if you want to see more 
market design algorithms. I'm always happy to talk about them. Have a great rest of your day, folks, and I'll see all you wonderful, wonderful people next time.